four, three, two, one. Launch, launch, launch. Stop. Reorientation started. Reorientation complete. Apogee. Mass jettison. FBC jettison. Drug deploy. Drug cut. Pilot deploy. Mains are out. First stage disc reef. All right. Second stage disc reef. Full open, three mains. All right. Second segment started. I'm not an astronaut, but that looked perfect. That looked perfect. Tom Jones is with us. He is an astronaut. Tom? Good morning, Bill. How'd it look to you? Uh, it was a, an incredible uh, jolt, I think, if there had been a crew on board. This is an unmanned test, of course. The G-load would have been about 18 times normal force of gravity, uh, a little bit less than an ejection seat in a fighter airplane. And this is an Orion abort test to try to test a, a way to get astronauts away from a failing booster in the very early stages of launch. And it looked like it went incredibly well. It's uh, ironic, though, that this test, which was supposed to be the first of several leading up to an astronaut escape system fully qualified, may be canceled by the president proposal to do away with the rocket and the capsule that we're supposed to use this launch abort system. Well, we watched the animation earlier today from NASA and this looked exactly like the animation laid it out. Uh, the, the shuttle missions though, it never had an, op uh, an option like this to get out. Well that's true and when my crew had a pad abort back in 1994, we had a main engine failure right on the launch pad. We had no way of getting out of the shuttle except uh, crawling out through the hatch and running down some escape wires that would have taken several minutes to get away from the rocket. And as you saw here, in a split second or two, the crew could rocket away from a failing booster. And the question is whether NASA can use this technology tested today to provide information to the commercial launch providers in the future to let them develop a safe astronaut escape system as well. Yeah, because Tom, uh